Welcome once again. In this session, we're doing Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 through 8. Now stick around to the end because we're going to get into this in much detail. I remember one time I worked with a guy and uh, he was a friend of mine and uh, there was another person who was also a friend of mine who came to the Lord and then he backslid and then he came back to the Lord and then he backslid again and so on and so forth. And I was talking to this other guy and I was like, well, you know, you see this guy here, you know, he's backsliding all the time. I said, what about Hebrews chapter six? And this guy looked at me like, uh, he didn't know what to say. He didn't know what to say about it. So we're going to get into this. We're going to talk about this. What exactly does this mean? This is Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4. For concerning those who were once enlightened and tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit and tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, and then fell away, it is impossible to renew them again to repentance, seeing they crucify the Son of God for themselves again and put him to open shame. For the land which has drunk the rain that comes often on it and produces a crop suitable for them, for whose sake it is also tilled, receives a blessing from God. But if it bears thorns and thistles, it is rejected and near being cursed, whose end is to be burned. So basically here, the author of the book of Hebrews says, if you've tasted of the heavenly gift, tasted of the, of the power of the word of God and of the age to come. In other words, if you were truly, truly born again, born in the spirit of God, that's why he says, tasted of the Holy Spirit. If you fall away, it is impossible to be renewed again to repentance because you're crucifying the Son of God all over again, and that's impossible. And then he likens it to a farmer in a field. He's like, well, a farmer plants a crop. If it's a good crop, it's a good crop. It produces fruit. But if it produces nothing but thorns and thistles, you can't go back. You can't go back in time and plant another crop and, and, hope, and just you can't do that. So here's the thing. Is it true that you can't come back to the Lord after you backslide? This is the thing, okay? Our walk with the Lord, anybody's walk with the Lord, is like walking over a mountain, okay? When you're going up the one side of the mountain, you're climbing that mountain, you know, that's when you're really, you're struggling against the flesh. You know, God is, is pulling you. God is wooing you, you know, and you're learning of the things of God and such. And, you know, it's an upward climb. The top of the mountain is when you really get born again. I'm talking about completely changed. Once you were a drug addict, now you're not. Once you were an alcoholic, now you're not. Once you smoked, you were addicted to nicotine. Now you're not. Once you use filthy language a lot, now you don't. Once you were very bitter and angry, and now your heart is full of grace and forgiveness, and it's easy to forgive people. You're not so easily triggered anymore. That is being completely born again. That's the top of the mountain. And after you get past the top, down the other side is relatively easy, so to speak. I mean, because then you're going on the fruit of the Spirit. You're not struggling against the flesh like you were, because now you're born again. Not that you don't, you know, still, you know, have temptations, or not that you don't still struggle in some ways. It's just that now it's a whole lot easier. You're a completely different person. When you first start climbing that mountain, before you get to the top, before you actually have that moment of complete and radical transformation, you can backslide. You can backslide. And you can come back. I mean, you, you, you can fall back and climb back up and fall back again and climb back up. You know, it could be a series of kind of backsliding and going forward and backsliding and going forward. But once you reach the top, once you taste of the heavenly gift, once you are truly born again, when you can say that old man, the old man is dead and I am a new creation in Christ. I am no longer the way I used to be. 
I died, as Paul said in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. You know, Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. You're dead. You can't go back because you've already died. You know, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's being born again. That's when you reach the top of the mountain, okay? You become a completely new creation. Like Abram became Abraham. Like Jacob became Israel. Like Cephas became Peter, okay? That's becoming born again. There is a point of no return. There is a point of no return. Once you get over that peak in the mountain, it's no more backsliding, <laughs> you know? It's more like now you're now you're going down and it's, I mean, God is really helping. Now you're flying, man. You're just going. You see, the writer of the book of Hebrews here likens repentance to crucifying the Son of God. It's because that's what Jesus died for. He died to give you power to repent. He died to provide for you a means and an ability to repent so that you can identify with the cross. Not like, oh, Jesus died for me. He paid the price for me. Now I don't have to. That's, that's corrupt Christian teaching, okay? Jesus died so that you could look upon that and say, I died with him. I, by faith, am crucified with Christ. Paul never said in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, well, Jesus went to the bank and paid all my debts for me, you know, and now I don't have to pay anything. You know, he, he was my substitute in that sense. Paul never said that. He spoke of identifying with Jesus. When he died on the cross, I died with him. When he rose from the grave, I rose with him in newness of life, a brand new creation, born again. Filled with the Spirit of God, just like the Spirit of God came into that dead body of Jesus in the grave, in that tomb, and breathed life into that body. So by faith, those who are born again, the Spirit of God comes into you and breathes life into you, and you become a brand new creation. Just like Jesus was a brand new creation after he rose. People who knew Jesus very well before he was crucified didn't even recognize him after he rose from the dead. He was a brand new man. And so once you become a brand new man, you can't go back. It's final. It's final. But it's glorious. Until next time, seek God with all your hearts. And if you do, I guarantee you, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.